Faisal, given given this exploration and this journey of going to these different teachers and and finding your personality tension line and um, <clears throat> really disintegrating your personality, how would you say that that changed you? Uh, we as as human beings are created in a, such an incredible, magnificent way. We have a, an, an authentic identity, a self that is not made of this realm. And we all share one common denominator, which is being. Mm. We are like um, entities in a domain that's very little known about, which is being, and all of that hidden constellation of, of beings uh, manifests for us in a form, in a body. We become this person, and we forget in time where we came from and who we are. Uh, we, when we enter this body, when we enter this room, we get affected by many influences. One is that to enter this human realm, we are we entering an ocean of programming too, a collective programming, you know, and it's called human conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, this nation has this kind of programming, that nation, this family, different kind of programming, and this being that we are, whether in pure beingness itself, or the entity that is not from this realm, but made of light, the soul, you know, or the body, the biological machine, this biological entity with its electromagnetic field and systems within it that are awesome. All of that is programmable. You can't even program the absolute itself to produce something. The absolute itself is pure being. It is beyond any programming. It is pure nature, but you can invoke it through meditation, through intention, through power, through mantra, and you can generate energy from it. You can generate blessings. You can generate damnation. You can generate collective conditioning. So the field, this field is an electromagnetic field programmable itself is a pure but we can really program it to produce matrices, to produce giant views of reality, uh, religious, spiritual, social, you name it. Uh, and then this, this becomes the samsaric field, a, a field of conditioning, a field in which we put our belief system, religious, spiritual, social, historical, comes in it. This field is buzzing now with so many systems, so many beliefs, so much history. So when the soul comes from pure land, enters this realm, the soul get affected, get revved up by the frequencies around. It could be a blissful birth. It could be a terrifying birth. Uh, the soul itself doesn't come pure by itself. It is, even though it's made pure, it carries with it its karma. It carries with it its baggage, its history. When we die, we don't leave the baggage here. We take it with us. You know? And Tibetan say we go through something called bardo, you know, and uh, if we get scared or something, then we might be pushed into reincarnation. Other religions, they say we go into purgatory or we go into hell or different system, but nobody says we go and end. You know, the soul leaves this body and takes with it karmically what it has accumulated, merit or virtues or, or karma, or heavy negative karma. The negative karma forces the soul to come back and be born in a level that corresponds to the frequency of this karma. And, you know, the soul comes with the grace and karma. Mm -hmm. Merit will make it a better birth. Mm -hmm. uh, negative karma, lower birth. 
Some people born in a very graceful way, beautiful life and evolution, and some are born in a very horrendous environment. You know, even the womb. I remember some was working with a client who was born in a womb. The mother was addicted to cocaine, mm. so he his body, his psyche, his soul was influenced by by that environment. Mm -hmm. The the so the the soul get affected by the karmic field and the family field <coughs> the body which is made of an amazing uh, composition flesh and electromagnetic field nerves gland system all those are also programmable you know, this this body is not only just flesh and this but also has electromagnetic fields in it has chakras, has centers, has energies, has all kinds of things in it. And if a soul was born in a blissful womb, in a blissful environment, that soul comes out like a high being, like a Rinpoche, yeah. born in enlightenment, doesn't lose the connection to the great being, doesn't lose the connection to its uh, soul, to its point of light. And the body is filled with essences. The body is not filled with terror, uh, anguish, negative merging, acidity, tar, lead, it's filled with gold, with sweetnesses, with amritas, with love, with, you see some of those Rinpoches, they glow with, with, with something, you look at them and you don't want to take your eyes off, off of them, yeah. they glow with something in the essence, I look at the Dalai Lama now, he looks like amazingly, like nothing left of the personal history or conditioning but completely reprogrammed the body is melted honey mango sitting mm -hmm. there you know? so we as entities and this universe as as an entity is is a programmable that's why there came so many religions so many spiritual pa uh, uh, passages uh, packages teachings uh, new age psychology telling us how to upgrade our programming. Then it became into conditioning religion and do this and you're good and you're just, it's not really you're good or bad. You do this, it's good. You do this, it's bad. Yeah. You hit the head against the wall, you're gonna have a headache. You, know? you meditate, you might have light inside your head. Yeah. It is very, very cause and effect. It is cause and effect because we are programmable. And the more we become aware of the nature of who we are, the more we can preserve the original program that we are made of pure awareness and an ocean of infinite possibility. We are an entity that can reincarnate again and upgrade and get more wisdom and more love. And this body also, if you really take care of it, it can be an, a fleshy essence full of love and sweetness and life giving and all of those things so considering this fact it, it you know that's why i understand how spirituality came many beings came each one telling us this is a way and this is a way and this is a way and they are all beautiful if we don't clash them and if we don't turn it into political scene and into religion mm -hmm. against religion you know uh, they are all different ways for different people to reach the same source being is everywhere, it's the same. We are all fish in the same ocean. But the programmability, programmability is very important to realize that you can become a diamond and you can become a rock. You choose whatever you can do, you can be anything. And this is part of the glory of the human being is that we are given <coughs> free will. If we use it wisely, we can evolve. If we use it foolishly, like nowadays, you know, humanity is using their free will into such generating immense negativity that destroying them and destroying the planet. But evolution, there is no ceiling to it. It's not like Sunday you get enlightened and you are become the absolute and this is it. No, this is beginning of a new life. But this time is full of wisdom, conscience of consciousness of so many things so you can really see the glory of what is here and evolve it so that to me is very important to know that 
uh, destiny, we write it. It's our karma. And we have that we have also the freedom to change it. And and where does grace come in? Sometimes all our work is not enough. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> our karma, our load, our limitation. We need help. We need <coughs> touch from source or touch from higher beings, elder brothers and sisters who went ahead of us. The Christ, the Buddha, the Bodhisattvas, and they are like brothers and sisters. They come and they can help, <coughs> help us. They will not take away our karma. They will give us love and energy and guidance, minimize the effect of our negative karma. So we can deal with it, we can heal and we can transform because ultimately it's uh, free will. Grace is here, the divine is here, all is here. It doesn't do, it doesn't go and heal people unless you really seek, unless you really, because you have the free will. It doesn't, like, why should it heal this person when this person doesn't want to be healed? I remember I, I knew a woman that she was very stubborn, a four in the Enneagram. And she got, she got cancer, you know? And I saw, told her, why don't you go work here at Heal? And no, I want to know why I had the cancer. I said, Heal, and you will know, seek, you will receive. No way. So she went till the end. And before she died, I was with her two, three days before she died. And she said, Faisal, I got it. So what did you get? She said, this whole thing came somewhere deep inside. I hated life. And I was destroying life without knowing. Now I will worship life forever. No. It took that long, that much to reach it. Grace could have come and erased it, but she would not have learned the lesson. She would have foolishly continued to destroy life. Till she dis discovered that in her personality, in her conditioning, there was hate for life. God knows from where. And it manifested as cancer. Yeah. To literally destroying the physical body so the soul doesn't enjoy life. She was angry at the soul, angry at God. And she took it by said, okay, as you deprive me from your life, I'll deprive you from your body. So the, the grace is here, love is here, and it's so soothing and so healing, but knock, the door shall open, seek, you know, and it'll come. So we need help, we really need help. <laughs> we do need help. <laughs> Thank you.